All right, so this segment is about how to hold your camera. And your camera is going to really reflect in the quality of the videos that you shoot. And if you don't have the equipment that you need and you don't use it properly, it's very difficult to shoot the video properly. So this is the iPhone 5 and it has no gear on it. And I want to just illustrate because some people say, well, why can't I just use my smartphone the way it is? And the reason is, is because our wrists are really, really poor at holding a camera steady. Our wrist, as we walk, we, we get this motion in it, we get this motion in it, and it's almost impossible to just take your wrist and walk through a house and get a good video. So the next step up is maybe some of you have like this little camera that we sell, the Vado, with the wide angle. Just putting this on it means that we're now holding it with two hands and it's no longer our wrists. We can move our wrists and it doesn't really impact how we're holding the camera. So that's one thing. Another thing, and this is the optimal setting, is this gear like this is ideal for us because it's weighted nicely, it's balanced, you got your light in case you need it. But most importantly, you can hold this with two hands and you can do this, okay? You can also, if you're ever moving to show a room, you can twist at the waist. In other words, we want to get away from wrist motion the most we can, the best we can, okay? So make sure you're holding the camera with the right equipment each time you shoot a PCR video. It'll help us to give you the best finished product. Okay, in this segment, I'm going to teach you how to walk when filming a PCR. Now this is different than the skill set you need for how to walk when filming a video tour, okay? Video tours are, I say, you're carrying the camera like it's a full cup of coffee over white carpet. That's not the case when we're doing a PCR. What we wanna do is, is we wanna try and make the footage as usable as possible, but ultimately it's all about the still shots that we're creating on our video, the still three second segments of the video, that's what these, this is all about. So walking between those, you can actually swing the camera around quite deftly, but not crazily. We don't want our poor people that watch your videos to have to take seasick meds. So we want to have a nice balance of not wasting your time and treating this like it's made out of glass. So let me give you an idea as I show you in the, for instance, the kitchen, what we're gonna do when we film in there and how I move the camera around. You might be surprised at how quickly you can swing the camera around and still get good footage. Okay, so here is the, this. And I'm walking quickly and, it, and, and I'm being intentional. Did you see how I just walked there? And then I'm, I'm turning on my light and I'm saying, and here's the condition of the cabinets. Okay. And so the walking motion is very deft. It's very to the point. Okay, now let me show you this room. Okay. Now, when you're walking with the camera, try not to do a lot of this, all right, because I'll ask the cameraman to walk now and do that. Go ahead. You don't like watching that. We don't like watching that. Go ahead and walk by just holding the camera still, but walk intentionally and quickly down the hallway after me. And you see, just walk quickly. It really doesn't matter if you jiggle it or, you know, that footage when you're walking from room to room is not what we're about here. It's okay, now I'm in this room. Okay, so walking from one point to the next, you can do so quickly. Just hold the camera intentionally. You guys got it down. Okay, now we're gonna talk about documenting the condition of the assets, as well as which assets you have. Now, whenever I speak to a room full of property managers, I always ask the question, how many of you always have the make, model, and serial number on every appliance and asset between every tenancy. And very few people put their hands up. Then I follow that up with, how many of you believe that your owners think that you're getting it for them or that you should be? 
And everyone says, yeah, I believe our owners expect that. So we're going to show you how to very easily do that in this segment called asset documentation. So what are the primary assets in most houses? It's your air conditioning system, your appliances, and it might be fixtures that are easily removable as well, such as expensive ceiling fans or chandeliers. So let's show you how to do each one of those, starting with the air conditioning, because that one really is expensive if they don't put the filters in properly or if they abuse it, it can be expensive. So we want to not only show what the make, model, and serial number is, we want to go one step further. We want to actually show what condition it's in. So we would be recording, and if you can look right here, see the make, model, and serial number there? To get that filmed, you can decide how much light you need, and there's a dimmer switch on the light. All right, and so you want to get your, your uh, camera up and do that three second still shot, and we'll be able to get those numbers off the plate for you. Now, underneath here is where your filter is, and you don't have to go under, but in order to show the filter being in place and the coil, whether or not it's clean or not, you would show the filter. You would also remove the filter and show the coil. Now let's move on to the appliances. So when documenting the condition of the stove, you know, you can show the overall condition right but the plate is usually down here and again you want to you can turn your camera sideways and hold it still we'll be able to twist that around post-production if we need it so you don't have to do gymnastics to be able to hold it up like that the refrigerator is usually right there as well so you want to try and get as still a shot as you can on it dishwashers they're a little tricky. Some dishwashers come with an, uh, a, a make, model, and serial number plate. Some don't. This one doesn't, but you would show that. Let's go outside. We'll look at the laundry equipment and the hot water heater. So again, you would show the condition of the appliance. Usually the tops of your laundry equipment get pretty beat up and the knobs, so you want to focus on that with one still shot. And then when you open up the door, again, there's your make, model, and serial number. So you want to get in where we can read that for three seconds, show the condition of the drum, show the condition of the tub, and in this case, the plate's right there. Okay? So if you do that all the way around while you're doing your inspection videos, you really do a great job of meeting the owner's expectations and making you look like a pro. Okay, now we're going to show you how to do a complete exterior video for a PCR. And remember, there's a lot of detail that we want to cover in this. And I'll give you some examples of most of those details, and you'll need to be on the, the lookout for the details you want to cover in your PCR. So let's get started. Okay, this is 3575 Dunes Road in Palm Beach Gardens. Today's date is October the 2nd, 2012. This is Todd Breen doing a, an exterior PCR video. And in this video, I will document for you the condition of the interior paint job that needs some work. We've also uh, got a, a lot of cleaning to do on the inside. And there's some exterior maintenance that's deferred that we need to address, such as the driveway, asphalt needing to be resealed, and etc. So that said, let's get started. From here, you can see that the roof and roof line is in good condition. The turbine is spinning freely, which is a nice thing to see. Also, the grounds appear to be well kept. The lawn does not need mowing. There are some weeds in the grass. You can see the little flowers coming up. And that driveway needs to get resurfaced with the asphalt coating or it will deteriorate rapidly. Also, the sidewalks are very black with mold. We might want to consider doing a pressure cleaning on those. All right, so you notice that I've just done a series of still shots. I haven't been constantly moving. 
it's still, still, still with like turning at the waist. So these are some techniques you want to watch. Now let's go ahead and walk up the driveway. You also noticed we did not park in the driveway because then that makes it impossible for us to document the condition of the driveway. We make a lot of bond claims on driveways for like oil stains, radiator stains and such. So I would move over here and say the driveway has no stains on it. It does, however, need to be resurfaced. Also, there's some parking ruts in the side yard from people parking there, which is permitted in this neighborhood. And believe it or not, it's a feature in this neighborhood. We purposely chose a 50-year-old home for this PCR training so that you could show all of these defects because there's plenty of defects on homes this age. So here we are looking at the carport floor. It looks like there's gray paint on top of a rust-colored paint and we're documenting that with a still shot. I'm also seeing some stains right here that look to be either oil or radiator related. So those will need to be cleaned or painted. The condition of the exterior paint job, you can see on the doors here that there's a lot of handprints on the doors. And so those are going to need to be cleaned. Also, there's just a lot of uh, bugs that need to be swept off of the exterior. We have a lot of cracks in the stepping stones as we go along the side of the house. Very uneven stepping stones here. In my opinion, this is a liability. The owner needs to get these reset or removed to provide a safe walking environment. These trees are barely trimmed up to height. We want to be able to walk underneath a tree and never hit a limb for liability purposes. You can see that there's kind of a weed growing over the chain link fence on this side of the property. There's some general items left that need to be removed. And the outside is where we show the condition of screens. In this case, the screen is there. It's broken, damaged, bent, and it's not there. So we would show that the screen is not on the window and it needs to be replaced. Another thing to look for on the exterior is these soffit vent screens. Because if they're not there here in Florida, we have termites that'll fly into your attic space. Now, at some point in the backyard of a single family home, you want to walk out pretty far and do a look back at the back of the house. Again, we're going to feature the roof line, the turbine, the condition of the roof and shingles and etc. And that's what we're doing at this segment of the video. We're also going to do slow pans with still shots on various angles of the landscaping while we're back here. If anything needs to be trimmed, we would comment on it. It's a good time and place to operate your sliding screen doors if you have any and document whether or not they slide. Also, if there's any tears in exterior screens, now's the time to show them. That needs to be rescreened. Again, we have a lot of bugs that have uh, nested on the wall. We need to clean those off. Now, mind you, this is a PCR, and I know you guys are going to get your properties in great shape before you do these videos. In this case, we're trying to just illustrate the point. This, this home has actually been moved out of and not made ready, so there's a lot more things to document. Screens are in good shape. This screen is missing. There's a rude Achiever 10 super high efficiency air conditioning unit. And we've had a number of these get stolen. So getting the model and serial number is always a good idea. Again, the soffit vents are in good shape. Now, 
when you're filming like this, come on in underneath here and I'll show you. If you get bright sky and dark under the roof, you can't see a thing under the roof. So if you move to get the bright sky out of your footage, you can actually focus on that screen. So make sure that you don't get one part of your screen really bright as you show another part or that footage isn't really doing what you hoped it would. This screen is torn out right here, so it needs to be repaired. Looks like the uh, tenant just threw the uh, landscaping rubbish here in a pile, so this needs to be removed. We've got a vine growing on the house. That needs to be removed. So this is kind of a combination of uh, exit inspection or final bond inspection or a PCR type video. All right. Then again, we've got more landscaping touching the side of the house, so we want to go ahead and remove that. Now you'll notice I'm not taking really good care with my video to get smooth footage because this is really not being used right here. The only thing I am being careful of is to not just routinely swing the video around for no good reason. Now I'm at seven and a half minutes so while we're here I might choose to do the exterior laundry room and if I did it would be this is the exterior laundry room the paint on the floor is in poor shape. The door has a triangular patch on the bottom. Some peeling paint, lots of dirt and smudges and marks. You can see just how heavy the smudge marks are. Okay. Looks like the owner left some spare tiles here. There's a screen here, a couple more screens up there. We're unsure of their exact whereabouts. If you didn't open up cabinets, then you can do it on the fly. You show the condition of each shelf, and that shows the functionality of the cabinet doors. There's debris left in here that needs to be removed. lock sets and spare parts. There's knobs missing on these cabinets. So those knobs need to be replaced. We could document the condition of the washer and dryer. It's a Maytag. Here is the make, model, and serial number. And the condition of the drum, no rust. Here is the water heater, make, model, and serial number. It's an A.O. Smith. It appears in good shape. There's some gas and paint in here. Here's the condition of the Maytag. It's a matched set. Got some marks, some dirt on the uh, lid. It needs to be cleaned. There's a lot of uh, debris around the surface of it. However, the tub is in good shape. The tag is right here. You don't want to get a lot of light on those tags or it's hard to read the numbers. Okay, so now we'll keep going around the front of the house until we're done. You can see a section of the driveway is caved in. Ideally, I would have caught that on the first pass so that we don't have to go back and put it on the driveway. But if you do occasionally notice something and you want to add it back to a segment you've already done, that's okay. Just don't make it a habit. We're missing both the large screens on the bay windows in the living room. The door has some marks. It looks like there used to be a screen door here and it's missing. Got some corrosion on the exterior light fixture. The paint on the house numbers is, uh, is uh, fading. Okay, here's a uh, sprinkler timer. Okay, 
Looks like there was a bougainvillea here that was trained on these sticks, however it's fallen over and it needs to be trimmed up. Again, the screens are in good shape unless otherwise noted. Here's one more look at this side of the house. There's a direct TV satellite dish. And now that concludes the exterior portion of our PCR video at 3575 Dunes Road by Todd Breen. Okay, so we're about to begin the interior common area video, and to do so, we want to again introduce the video properly and then shoot the common areas. So I happen to know the layout of this home that the common areas are to the left and all three bedrooms are to the right. So it's very easy, it's a good flow. But you wanna have your flow in your mind and make sure you're gonna be able to cover all the areas you intend to in your 15 minute time limit. Okay, so let's roll it. Okay, we're at the interior video for 3575 Dunes Road, about to do the common areas. Today's date, October 2nd. Video is being conducted by Todd Breen. So here's the living area ceilings. The ceiling fan is operating. Walls and floors. By way of summary, there is some cleaning necessary here as well as painting. Um, this window blind operates properly. This one, however, does not, so I can't, I can't get it to actually operate. So it needs to be either repaired or replaced. The window sill is quite dusty. And the floors are quite in need of cleaning as well. So here's the condition of the floors, walls, ceiling. Now the AC return, unless otherwise noted, are clean and serviceable. If I point them out, it's because they do need cleaning. As you can see, this one is serviceable and clean. Here is the dining area off of the kitchen. The walls. I'll show you in a moment, do need to be painted in the ceilings. There's a lot of dirt around the light switches. The corner bead paint is in poor condition. And you can see a number of scratches and marks on the wall, some of which are dirt, some of which are purple crayons. Smudge marks, hand marks, and some of them are actual gouges or dents into the drywall itself. So we have to not only clean this uh, house, but we have to paint it and fill some of those holes. So here's the walls, ceilings, or walls, floor ceilings. And then we'll walk back around and show some more of the individual damages. Again, being sure to hold the camera still for three seconds. If you're moving when you show it, you didn't show it. There's a shiny spot on the wall here. Looks like somebody touched up or left tape on the wall. But anyways, that needs to be painted over as well. Okay, so now I'll continue to this room. The tile floors do need to be cleaned as to the wooden floors throughout the house. I could not get the light fixture to turn on, so I'm not sure if all four bulbs are burned out or I couldn't find the switches. We do have a couple of uh, cockroaches, crickets, showing that the place needs to be cleaned up. There's a backlight switch there that works. Glass is serviceable. Got a lot of uh, purple marks on the wall here. Again, evidence of the need for an entire paint job. There's dust in the corners. 
there's rust stains on the tile floor that are going to need to be heavily cleaned out. A lot of black marks on the floor as well. Here's the condition of the floors from this end of the room. And this is the rear family room off of the, uh, the main house. These blinds appear to be working properly. I have twisted them and they all seem intact. I checked that out before I began filming. The sliding glass door track is quite dirty and needs to be cleaned in order to keep the doors operating properly. That door is quite dirty as well, the track, so we need to get it working better. It's, it, those wheels need to be lubricated. More marks on the wall. There's a mark here. And then there's a nail hole that needs to be patched. Okay, that ends that room. Now let's do the, uh, the kitchen. There's some uh, paint on the ceiling of the kitchen. It looks like they replaced that light fixture with a circular one. And there used to be a square one or a rectangular one rather, and they didn't finish painting the ceiling. And this um, ceiling is actually quite dirty around the AC return. So this ceiling needs to be painted. Curtains are on the, uh, the door. So here's a condition of the floors. Tile. Ceiling. And now here's the, I'm going to turn on my light. Um, if I put it really bright, I get a lot of backsplash. If I turn it down a little bit, I get a softer light. So you decide how you want that set. There's debris left inside the cabinet that needs to be cleaned out. There's roach droppings. More roach droppings. Quite a bit, actually. And that's going to require cleaning. Here's the hood fan and light. Fan is operational. We want to show the condition of the um, underside of the hood vent. There's grease that needs to be cleaned. Okay, here's the stove top, glass stove, there's some light scratching on this burner, and a little bit of pre-existing or dirt that I don't know that'll come out, so we've got to try and clean that. The exterior, of uh, there's a chip on the uh, stove enamel right there, the oven needs to be cleaned. The racks look like they are no longer shiny, so we'll find out if we can get them to come clean or not. It appears to be a self-cleaning oven, so maybe we need to do that. There's actual food debris on the inside of the glass. Crumbs inside the drawer. Food stains. There is the make, model, and serial number of the GE. Lazy Susan works, however there are, it needs to be cleaned as well. Ooh. Kitchens take a little bit of work. More debris on the shelves. There's a dead cockroach inside the kitchen cabinet. That's why this is more of a final bond video than a PCR, but it's the same techniques for, for both styles of videos, isn't it? More evidence of the cleaning that's necessary. There's a wine rack over the stove or over the sink. Here's the sink. Food items left behind the uh, looks, looks like rice or spaghetti stuck there. Soap scum on the stainless steel. So we need a thorough scrubbing of the sink. Inside of the cabinet, you can see the side walls are quite stained.
more items left behind that need to be removed. Countertops. I like to do the countertops in one move and show them all at the same time so that we can comment on countertops all at the same time. So the countertops and the backsplash appear to be in good condition and the grout needs cleaning but I don't see any missing grout. Here's the Whirlpool um, dishwasher. It's important to show whether or not the racks and the wheels work and the pins have any rust on them and whether or not this door closes and latches. Got some marks on the uh, cabinet right there, scratches on the side of the refrigerator. Here's the Whirlpool refrigerator. Now, those of you who can't actually see the top, you can always hold the uh, camera up over your head if you need to and just show the condition of the top. And sometimes if you just rest it there, you can actually show whether or not it needs to be cleaned. More often than not, it does need to be cleaned. Oops. Food debris on the magnet, stains on the magnet. Door racks are in good shape. There's one shelf. There's an ice maker with a bin. A little bit of stains and food marks on the inside. The refrigerator, I always show the door and the racks and the bins. Make sure that they're in good shape. If, if this is missing, you want to note that. All right. If it's missing, you wouldn't necessarily know. You would see the little nub there and there wouldn't be a butter uh, dish cover. Some more food and debris that requires cleaning. Now, since I'm at the bottom of the fridge, it would be a great time to start at the bottom here without having to move the camera all over the place. The crisper drawers are functional. Shelves are tight. Again, some more uh, items and debris left on the uh, shelves and there is the make model and serial number this one's really hard to get it's just important that you hold it still for three seconds whatever you do okay and show the condition of the magnet when you're moving the door okay so we've done the refrigerator I'm at 11 minutes and 30 seconds and I'm gonna take a minute and just stop and say yeah I did all the common areas and now I'm ready to do the bedroom area. So I'll say, so this is, con this concludes the uh, PCR or final bond video for uh, 3575 Dunes Road, October 2nd by Todd Breen. This is the second video. And we'll hit stop. Next we'll do another part of the house. Okay, now we're going to do the interior sleeping area or bedrooms because that's just the way it worked out in this property. You have to make your decision on how you're going to divide up each property into segments. And so now that we're about to do that part of the video, we're going to begin it again with the same intro. And then I'm going to, to make sure that I get everything done, I'm going to go down the left and come back the right. That way I won't be jumping around too much and I'll make sure I get every room in its entirety. So we're going to start filming and again do our uh, intro again. Okay, this is the interior bedroom segment of the PCR or final bond video, whichever the case may be, at 3575 Dunes Road, done on October 2nd by Todd Breen. Here's the guest bathroom floors. Now some of the things I do, I like to grab a hold of these and actually put pressure on them. I could say that's loose, all right? Same thing with uh, this, you want to make sure, see that's loose, you want to document that sort of thing. Got some uh, previous towel racks that have been removed and the holes have been grouted over. Okay, get some more natural light in here. Some more holes where things have been removed. 
the tub has debris in it. Now, see how the light is? You can decide whether or not it does better video. See that natural light? You can decide if you want to use natural light or use the, the light that you have. You can decide that on the fly during your video as well. Now, commodes are an interesting thing to do because I always want to uh, show the condition of the bowl and then shake, the, uh, shake it. See, that's loose, so you document that. My apologies for this not being a clean commode, but you guys are property managers, so this won't be the first time you've seen that. And then we document whether or not it flushes. Same thing with the sinks. You show the condition of the sinks, whether or not both the water supplies work. Debris in the medicine cabinet needs to be wiped out. The Hollywood bulbs are all working. They're dusty, though, so we might want to clean them off. Here's the inside of the cabinet, more roach droppings, and I'll get in kind of close on those because we want to make sure we can charge for that stuff. Okay, and after you close the cabinet doors, it's important that you focus on them for three seconds so you can show the condition of the exterior of the doors. Light switch marks. Now, the door to the bathroom, we haven't actually operated. So we would want to operate the door while we're inside of a room show whether or not there's a door stopper, okay? And then show the condition of the back of the door. Now, in this case, you could stand back here and say here's the condition of the ceiling, walls, and floor. That's a little bit challenging because of the nature of these videos in these small rooms, okay? So here's the, the hallway again. And the ceiling. The air handler is a little bit uh, dusty on the outside. And then here's the condition of the AC filter. It's clean and in place. And then depending on your availability to do so, you could remove the filter and show the condition of the coil. Show the condition of the closet doors. A lot of these come off the track and they don't operate, so it's a good idea to show them operational. There's some spare floorboards paint. Some more spare floorboards. Okay, so again, at this side, we're going to show the condition of the floors. Our cameraman, Johnston, you're doing a great job the attic access here. Now I'm leaving the camera up as I spin into this room just to make it flow better. Master bedroom. See I announce each room the best you can. That helps the person writing the PCR or the uh, exit to be able to relate to the rooms. And instead of showing the bathroom now I'm going to complete the actual bedroom and then do the bathroom. Okay, you can see the uh, skirt board is pulling away from the wall, so the caulking needs to be redone. Some dirt on the uh, and dust on the verticals. And again, getting up close and doing this is a good way to illustrate it. You might not see that dust doing this and holding the video still. That's very compelling, isn't it? For the charge that will be made. There's some stains on the skirt board, cobwebs and dust. And uh, we'll turn around here and show the condition of the floors, walls, and ceiling. Okay, coming around again to show these and, uh, you know, operating them to show that they work. You could also do that with these as well. That really depends. We usually check them all out when we do our pre-move-in and just show the ones that don't work. 
There's more marks on the wall. So this will uh, require painting. The inside of the closet is very badly scuffed up. And to give you an idea of that, I'll get in nice and closely and I'll hold the camera as still as I can. Now the, the light isn't necessarily helping. So you need to be paying attention to the condition of the light. If that light gives too much noise to backsplash or bright areas, then it doesn't help. It actually hurts. And there's the door functioning. Okay. More marks on the wall. And while we're here, I'll finish the master by showing that there is a door stop in place and the condition of the back of the door. Okay, here's the master. It needs one of those types of door stops, which is in place. There's a gouge in the door that's been painted over. Marks on the door. Okay. Here's the bathroom, master bathroom floor. And ceiling. I'll turn in and keep it on the ceiling and just keep going with walls, tile. Okay. And then here's the condition of the cabinetry. Again, I'll give it a little bit of extra light in case it helps. We need to clean out the drawers. Okay, we got soap scum on the uh, drain fixture. Okay, there's no medicine cabinet here. There's just a mirror that needs to be cleaned. And the bulbs are in good shape. So again, here we come to a toilet that we document needs cleaning. You can see the stains and the rings. We grab the seat. It's tight, clean. And it too needs to be cleaned a little bit. Here's your shower floor. You'll notice the soap scum. Shower valves. Here's your shower head, window treatment, and then show whether or not the doors operate well. There's a fair amount of mold down here at the bottom. So we're gonna get as close as we can to that. All right, and then on to another room. So this would be the second bedroom, and I happen to know it's the east bedroom. You just wanna when you have three bedrooms, be able to speak to which one you're looking at. And I'll just look at the door since I'm going through it. There is no door stopper here, so that needs to be installed. Paint in this room is actually in reasonably good condition. There's a lot of dirt on these blinds. We are missing the turning device, so there's no way to, to manually operate these without the, the rod here. So we, we need a rod in place. Now I'm back to the other corner, and I show the condition of the flooring. And in this case, there are some very minor stains on the carpet. And so to document those, we come down and get in real close to them, because otherwise you won't see them. There's some more water stains here. And there are some tears here where the uh, carpet was patched into the closet. There's a closet. Okay. Some more marks. And there's some more stains on the carpet. Here's the hallway linen closet. The shelves could use a little bit of attention. And there's, it looks like it wasn't swept out at all. Dust bunnies and dirt down there. 
Okay, here's the, uh, the western bedroom. Door stopper is installed and working. You can see a patch on the door where flat paint was used to paint over the gloss that would normally be on the door. More marks on the wall in the closet. Again, unless otherwise noted, during the preparations I examined which window treatments were working and which were not. Now I'm noticing now that there's some stains on the floor that I'll cover, and I'm also noticing that the AC return is loose. So on my way back around, I'll point out that there's some white stains on the floor that need to be cleaned. And I'll point out that there is a screw loose or missing on the AC return, some paint spots on the ceiling as well. Okay, so we're done now with some more marks on the hallway. Now we already did the hallway and I didn't show again that there was marks on the wall, so I'm showing it now. We'll go back and add that back into the written PCR. Better to show them than to, uh, to omit them. We've got the alarm here. So that concludes the bedroom portion of the PCR video at 3575 Dunes Road on October 2nd by Todd Breen.